Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, comedy, sci-fi film from 2018, titled Super Lopez. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a galaxy far away, planet Chitin lives under the dictatorship of evil Admiral Scorba. One evening, renowned scientist Jan and his wife have a baby that he's been experimenting with for months now, making him the ultimate weapon to save their planet. However, Scorba has learned about this and is now quickly approaching their laboratory. Since hiding the baby would only delay his capture, Jan accepts he has no other choice and puts him in a small spacecraft that he sends to the USA on Earth. After the baby is gone, Scorba arrives with his daughter Agatha, who reads Jan's mind and discovers what he's done with the baby. Scorba gives her a mission then, she must take the other spacecraft and follow the baby to capture him. Agatha does as ordered, but when they are about to arrive at Earth, the baby's ship crashes against a satellite, causing it to change trajectory, while Agatha continues the journey to the USA, the baby lands in Spain's countryside. A humble couple finds the baby and decides to adopt him even if they find his mustache extremely weird. They call him Juan Lopez and take him home with them together with the spacecraft, which they hide in the garage. As they begin living with Juan, they learn pretty quickly that this boy has extraordinary abilities besides making the mustache come back whenever they shave it, he has super strength, super speed, x-ray vision, and freeze breath among others. Unfortunately, whenever he displays these abilities, people would consider him a weirdo, and by the time he turns 10, he hasn't made a single friend. His parents tell him he would have been appreciated and respected in other countries, but in Spain, to fit in he needs to be mediocre and play pretend. Twenty years pass after his tenth birthday, and Juan is now living alone in the big city and keeps his powers hidden. One morning, his best friend and supervisor Jamie Gonzalez Liedenbrock wakes him up through the phone, demanding to know why he isn't at work yet. Juan pretends he is already at the office and uses his super speed to wash, change and run to the office, appearing at his desk before Jamie can catch on to his lie. Gossiping as a friend, Jamie tells Juan that he's hired a new employee that he felt he had some sparks with during the eight interviews he called her for, since he mistakenly believes interviews can equal dates. When he mentions he wants to throw her a welcome party, which this office never does for new employees, Juan refuses to participate and leaves his desk to have breakfast. When someone rings the bell, he uses his X-ray vision to discover the new employee is Luisa Lanas, an old friend of Juan from university. He opens the door for her, happy to learn she still remembers him, and ends up inviting her to the little welcome party he suddenly has changed his mind about. After working hours are over, they throw the little party, which ends up being just Juan, Luisa, Jamie, and two janitors that Jamie is making stay by force. When Luisa excuses herself to go to the bathroom, Juan uses his super hearing to listen to the conversation she's having on the phone with a friend, mentioning how she's creeped out by the way Jamie keeps coming onto her, but she's glad Juan is there as well. This inspires Juan not to leave the party when Jamie asks him to with the intention of being alone with her, but when Juan takes a moment to go to the kitchen and use his freeze breath on the tap water to make ice for their drinks, Luisa leaves. Not giving up yet, Juan uses his super speed and finds Luisa at the subway station, where they agree to get pizza together. At the restaurant, they're having a nice chat when a group of obnoxious teenagers arrives and start making lots of noise while playing pool. Luisa confronts them and event hits Juan with her purse when they insult her, but the teenagers only laugh at them and even make Juan fall by playing an old trick where one of them would crawl behind him without him noticing and the other pushes him over with just a finger. This frustrates Juan, but he does nothing about it to protect his identity. Moments later, while waiting for the subway to go home, he thinks about what his father has taught him and wonders if it truly is worth staying hidden when suddenly, the subway train passes by completely out of control. After seeing a sign with an ad for Chit that says today is the perfect day to take that first step, Juan jumps on the tracks and uses his super speed to arrive at the next station before the train does. However, when he tries to stop it, his strength proves not to be enough and the train just drags him away with it. Juan uses his super speed again to reach the final station and creates a barrier with the emergency fire hose, which manages to push the train back when it arrives and prevents a crash from happening. After the danger is over, everyone in the station stares at Juan, who steals a cap from a random passenger to cover his face as he runs out of there. The next day, the news of a man stopping a subway train reaches the Spanish news, but they also reach a now adult Agata Mola, who is still in the USA working as the CEO of CHIT, the biggest electronic company in the world. She's never stopped searching for Juan, and now that she finally has a clue, she and her army of robot clones will fly to Spain to find him. Meanwhile at the office, the employees are also discussing the subway story, except for Luisa. After commenting on the fact Jamie continues to show creepy behavior, like the fact he's already printed 500 business cards with her name, she gives one one while commenting on the fact she thinks a Spanish superhero would be very pathetic because superheroes should be American, English or Japanese, perhaps even German. After they agree to go out for dinner together again, their conversation is interrupted by a jealous Jamie that comments on the fact the famous Agatha is coming to Spain to meet the mysterious subway hero, this makes Luisa even more sure that the whole thing is just a publicity stunt. 
Eager to return to her home planet, Agatha calls her father to tell him she's found Jan's son and that her technology is in every household of the world, controlling it all. Scorba, however, is very dismissive of her for having taken decades to make any kind of progress and tells her he'll only believe it when he sees it. In the meantime, Juan is on a bus on his way to meet Luisa when suddenly a killing headache starts bouncing in his head as a pitching sound makes his ears hurt. It's Agatha, directly talking into his mind to tell him to come see her at the chit building. Curious enough to want to know what's going on, Juan goes to said building, where he's invited to the CEO's office to have dinner with Agatha. She tells Juan that he's an alien like her and that she could take him home among their people, who won't judge him for his abilities. Juan doesn't believe her and tries to leave, so Agatha, after reading his mind and learning about his affections for Luisa, sends her army of robot clones to stop him. Juan isn't a trained fighter, but thanks to his superpowers, he only needs to flail around to defeat the robots, who are no match for him. There's a lot of them though, and they never stop coming, so when the robots push him to the ground and form a pile on top of him, one sneaks out from under them and takes the elevator to finally leave. Agatha doesn't give up however, and when she finds she's forgotten his jacket, she looks inside his pockets and finds Luisa's business card, giving her the information she needs for her next plan. Since JIT technology is everywhere, it's easy for her to gain control of the cleaning robot they have at Juan's office and she uses it to take a DNA sample from Luisa's cup. Then the robot connects itself to a computer to send her this information, and the noises get the attention of Jamie, who is working late. When he sees the information being transferred on the computer screen, he tries to pick up the little robot only to get electrocuted by it. Then the robot starts chasing him through the office, revealing it's been hiding spider-like legs, so Jamie takes a coat rack and, after asking the janitors for help, the three of them begin smashing the robot until it isn't working anymore. Sadly, it's too late, the DNA information has already finished transferring by the time they're done. Jamie tries to call Luisa to warn her, but she isn't picking up the phone. The other person that is trying to contact Luisa is Juan, who shows up at her place and finds her coming from the restaurant utterly drunk. He tries to apologize and tells her he's had a crazy night, but she gets angry when he can't reveal why and tries to get him to spend the night with her. Juan refuses, explaining he can't take advantage of a drunk woman, but when Luisa calls him a coward, he at least gives her a good kiss before leaving. The kiss has been seen from afar by Jamie, who had come with a robot to warn Luisa and now feels betrayed by Juan. At that moment, Agatha arrives in her van and after reading Jamie's mind, she sees he's also in love with Luisa, which she can use as part of her plan too. Seeing as this woman is both Juan's and Jamie's weakness, she's made a robot clone of her, and she promises Jamie he can have the real one if he accepts to help her. The following day, Juan arrives at his parents' house and demands to know the truth. At first, they try to change the subject, but Juan insists and they eventually give in, confessing that yes, he is indeed an alien, and they even show him the spacecraft they've kept hidden all this time. When Juan presses a button, a hologram of Jan appears and proceeds to explain everything, ending with an important note, Juan is expected to go back and save Kaiden from Scorba. Juan has no interest in being anybody's hero, no matter how much his mother tells him he's their only hope. With the baby sheet she finds inside the spacecraft, she makes a superhero outfit for Juan, which includes a cape. Superheroes usually wear capes for flying, but Juan isn't sure if he can do that in the first place, so he goes to the roof of the house and tries to fly, only to immediately fall on the ground. Thinking this has been a waste of time, Juan tries to leave, and on the road, he comes across three teenagers that make fun of him for his clothes. When one of the boys gives him the middle finger, Juan responds with the sign of the horns, which causes him to start levitating. As the teens run away in fear, Juan makes the same gesture with his other hand, and this finally allows him to fly high in the sky. He can't control it yet though, so first, he falls on the Majorca shore, and his second try drops him at Vizcaya. It's by the third try that he finally gets the hang out of it and he returns home, although he can't help entering it through the window. After his mother helps him hide the supersuit under his clothes, the Luisa robot arrives to see him. Juan does think she's acting a bit strange but doesn't suspect anything yet, so he takes her to his room to speak in private. He tells her everything that has happened to him and Julia, who is being controlled by Agatha, acts very accepting and tries to convince him to go back to his planet and help his people. But Juan is still thinking about the kiss they shared last night and doesn't want to leave her, so Jamie, who is working with Agatha, takes over the robot clone's controls and makes Luisa tell Juan that the kiss was awful and hitting on her had been an act of betrayal towards Jamie. This gives Juan something to think about and he admits she's right, Jamie has been the only friend he ever has and he cares about him, so he should be more considerate. This touches Jamie deeply, causing him to cry and not want to play along with this plan anymore, so Agatha moves on to plan B. Robot Luisa kisses Juan then punches him before grabbing him and tossing him through the wall into the living room. As she comes downstairs too, Juan struggles to take off his civilian clothes, but once he's done, he engages Robot Luisa in physical combat. The fight at first, seems to be pretty even, but when Juan's mother distracts Luisa, Juan takes the chance and smashes her head off with a ham leg. Seeing as her plan has failed, Agatha tries to use Jamie to get the real Luisa for her, but Jamie doesn't want to help her anymore. 
After reading his mind and finding out he's called Juan to warn him, Agatha captures Jamie and begins thinking about her next move. Meanwhile, Juan calls Luisa to learn she's in Barcelona, so he flies there to meet her by the Arc de Triomphe. He tries to explain everything to her, but she doesn't believe him, so he starts taking off his civilian clothes right there in the middle of the park to give her a demonstration. When he's about to fly above the Arc however, he's stopped by a group of men dressed as famous cartoon characters that tell him that to work in that area he needs permission from their boss. At that moment, a chit van arrives and kidnaps Luisa, but Juan can't go after her because the fake superheroes keep getting in his way. As the men try to beat him up, Juan struggles with another message from Agatha in his mind, telling him she has Luisa and he knows where to find them. While moving around in pain, Juan dodges a couple of hits and the angry workers end up fighting each other, so he takes the chance to fly away and go to the chit offices. There, he finds Luisa and Jamie cuffed to a wall. They try to warn him not to step out of the elevator because it's a trap, but since they're yelling at the same time, Juan can't understand them and falls for it anyway. When he tries to help his friends, a set of giant speakers on the walls begins producing an extremely high-pitched sound that hurts his super ears, torturing him with excruciating pain. Thinking about how these scenes usually go in superhero movies, Jamie tells Luisa to give him a speech about how much she likes him and believes in him, but it doesn't work. Jamie insults Juan for being a pathetic superhero, and for a second there, Juan seems to recover. This indicates that he's the opposite of the classic superhero stories and he reacts better to insults because he wants to prove them wrong, so when Luisa notices this, she begins to insult every aspect of him, and soon Jamie joins her as well. Thanks to their twisted support, Juan manages to gain some strength and destroy a wall with his heat vision, then he breaks their cuffs and takes them both flying with him to hide at his parents' home. Agatha doesn't see this on the security cameras because at the moment, Scorbo arrives at Earth. He shows no interest in having an emotional reunion with his daughter after so long, he only wants to see Juan. When Agatha takes him to the main chamber, they find out they've escaped. Scorba begins ranting and scolding Agatha, saying he never thought she could catch Juan, calling her useless, an embarrassment for the family, and wishing she wasn't his daughter. Tired of dealing with his toxicity, Agatha finally steps for herself and disconnects his oxygen tank, effectively killing him. She reads his mind before he passes out for good and sees he finally is proud of her for this villainous act before she takes over his floating throne and gets ready for a new plan. At the Lopez's house, Juan tells Luisa he doesn't want to be a superhero and tries to burn the supersuit, but it's made of a fireproof fabric. At that moment, Agatha arrives in her father's spaceship and descends using the floating throne, which she proceeds to transform into a robot after telling Juan she's going to destroy Earth. Juan rushes to put on his supersuit, which proves to be difficult because it's rather hot at the moment. His delay gives Agatha time to come closer and aim her robot at him, but she's suddenly distracted by Juan's father firing his shotgun at her. Agatha uses the robot's special arm to try to suction the man and Juan tries to prevent it, but his grip on his father's hand isn't strong enough to stop the robot from sucking him in. Then Agatha hits Juan a couple of times before tossing him away with such strength that he lands in the middle of a Barcelona match. While the three teenagers from earlier show up and begin recording everything, Juan comes back with the Barcelona goal net and throws it at the robot with an awful aim, catching his mother instead. Agatha suctions in the woman as well before punching Juan to get him on the ground and stomp on him over and over. When she takes out the electric saw to finally finish him, Jamie appears in front of her to distract her, which is part of a plan Luisa has convinced him to do. As Agatha goes after him and sucks him as well, Luisa comes out of the garage driving the Lopez's truck. It's her cries of help that wake one up this time, and she asks him to pull the same trick the teenagers at the pizza place had done on him. She parks the truck in front of the pool before running away, and one punches the robot until it is in the right spot. After he tells Agatha his name is Super Lopez, he uses his freeze breath on the robot cockpit before pushing it over, causing it to trip on the truck and fall in the water, which damages it beyond repair. One's parents and Jamie come out of the pool wet but safe, but also does Agatha. Juan's mother reminds him that his home planet is still waiting for his help, and Juan tells her not to worry because he has a plan. Days later, Scorba's spaceship returns to Chitin, carrying Agatha and the fake superhero from the park that everyone believes to be Juan and names him the new leader of the planet. Back on Earth, Juan has become a proper superhero, but the press and the general public don't like him very much. He and Luisa have also begun dating, although Luisa is very frustrated with Juan for always arriving late because of all the superheroing he does. During one of their many dates at a restaurant, the waiter tells them someone has already paid for their bill and points at a mysterious man by the bar that disappears after calling Juan Super Lopez and telling him he owes him one, only leaving a pacifier behind. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.